Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about our pistol grip. I'm going to be talking about how my two-handed grip is, but before I even get into the two-handed grip, I want to first uh, do a demonstration. I'm going to be shooting this Glock 43 one-handed, okay? So the target over there is two foot by one foot uh, at 45 feet from this position. One out of six hits in my uh, in my right hand. Let's go to my left hand. Right, so I think I missed one there. One out of six I missed. Uh, so five out of six. I'm um, both of them right-handed and left-handed. Okay, so. Um, the thing to, to be aware of is as I grip the gun, right, it doesn't matter what size gun it is, whether it's a small Glock 43 or a big G17, as I grip it, this opening over here is the weakest point of my grip. The gun is trying to come out of here as it recoils, okay, so I'm gripping the gun tight. You don't want to grip the gun down here because it's going to want to do that, okay? Grip the gun as high as possible. Ideally, I'd want to be back here, right, so I can get behind the recoil, but that's impossible because the slide's going back and forth. So I want to be as high as possible, and ideally, I want to close this. So if I'm taking a two-handed grip, right, I'm going to take this meaty part over here, and basically, I'm plugging that hole, right? So I'm filling in, I'm filling in the missing part here. Right, so this hand is forward like it's pouring water, right, or pointing the butt, the thumb forward. Okay, now where this thumb lands kind of depends on the size of your hands and size of the gun. Okay, ideally you want to be able to put this thumb on the frame over here, right? Uh, because again, the gun is trying to come out of here, so this is the direction that the gun is trying to jump out of. So I want to basically reinforce this side over here, okay? All right, because this side's got all this meat here on this side to keep, you know, to uh, basically, you know, this is, there's a lot of meat on this side to keep the gun in its place. So it's trying to come out of here. So I'm going to take this hand, put it forward, put my thumb on the frame, and then, you know, and basically squeeze, what I do is I squeeze tight, okay? I've seen some, a uh, couple of competition shooters that actually turn their thumb, uh, turn their hand in, Right, they're trying to get even more pressure, uh, which is fine. That's not a technique that I use, but the, but the I, same idea. They're trying to close uh, this gap over here. Now, a lot of times with women or people with small hands, they may not be able to get their thumb up on the frame over here, so it may end up back here, or or with some women sometimes they have to just stick it down over here underneath it. You don't want your thumb to be anywhere uh, near the. Uh, uh, near the, the, the trigger guard, right? Because your, th your finger's coming through on this side over here. You don't want this thumb in a position where the, this finger and this thumb are going to interfere. So you either want it up on the frame over here or down here out of the way, okay? Uh, obviously, it can't be on the slide because the slide's going back and forth. Um, I mean, I've seen people try to do it, but, but it's got to be either on the frame or tucked over here. I've seen some people stick it out like this all the way. That's fine. Right, at least it's not interfering. But if you if you if you have the ability to get it up on the frame and press in, that'll give you a little bit extra reinforcement. However, the majority of the work is being done with this meaty part over here. That's the important part. This is like the the thumb is the bonus. That's the extra. So get this meaty part first in its position. Don't don't like don't obsess with trying to get your thumb up here and then you leave a gap like this. Right. It's more important that this that this meaty part here, you know, get, gets a nice tight seal over here, so your thumbs fit together like a, like a puzzle piece. Now, when I go to the smaller gun, okay, with like this G43, I'm of course I'm able to also get my thumb on the frame, and I'm able to reinforce it. Uh, the nice thing about these Palmer 80s, I love the way they got this cut here because it allows your hand to come your fing your fingers to come up a little bit higher. On the factory, um, on the fa factory Glocks, okay, they don't, the, the cut here isn't quite as deep, 
So a lot of times people that shoot a lot, they'll, they'll start getting calluses over here. Uh, the Palmer 80s are great because they've got this deep cut over here. So your hand can come in nice and high and, and you don't, you know, it doesn't eat into your hand. Okay. So that's the grip that I'm trying to take and push into the gun. Now, when I'm shooting one handed, right, I'm aware that of this issue where this is the weakest point in my grip. Okay. Uh, it doesn't matter what size gun I'm using, right? This is the weakest point in my grip. The gun is trying to jump out of here. So if you guys know, right, if, you, if you're experienced shooters, the gun is very sensitive to how you squeeze the trigger. So if you, if you, if you jerk the trigger, the gun's going to roll down. If you take your finger and you hook too hard to the right, all your bolts are going to go to the right. If you push left, all your bolts are going to go to the left. So you can, you can control, you can basically steer the gun with your finger. So when I am shooting one handed, right? What I'm doing is I know that the gun is trying to come out of this opening here. So what I do is I intentionally apply a little bit more pressure if I'm shooting right handed towards the right or if I'm shooting left handed uh, towards the left to offset that the gun is trying to come out of this hole, okay? So uh, with the, I'll put the soft part of my finger on the trigger, right? This is the most sensitive part of my finger. That's the part that goes on the trigger. And with the with the optics, right? Because on both of these guns, I've got the uh, the Halson uh, ACSS systems, right? Let me show you what I'm looking. At. So CDS ACSS, it's got the dot over there in the center. So the the big circle on the outside is great for guiding you to the center, right? If you're off alignment, okay. So on um, with both of these guns, I'll show you the other one over here. This is the larger one. What are your 17s, 19s, 26s? Where are you? Oh, there it is. Okay. It's a little out of focus. All right. So on both these guns, I have the ACSS. It's actually a lot brighter. I'm seeing it a lot brighter in the glass than when I was looking through the camera. So it's actually, it's very bright. Um, even though it's a sunny day today, it's bright. Uh, so with both of these guns, what I do is when I'm shooting them, I put my dot on the target. The nice thing about optics, right? Right. Single point of aim. When I, when I aim, I just focus on my dot. Or actually, rather, I focus on the target and the dot's on it, okay? So single point of aim. I look at the target and the dot's on it, um, and I don't have to shift my focus back and forth. If, you've, if you're using just iron sights, all right, what you have, obviously you gotta look at the target so you can see it, and then you have to shift your focus back to your front sight. And you know, so you're gonna match it up, so, you know, your eye can only focus on one thing at a time, right? So with iron sights, you're looking at target, uh, front sight, rear sight. So you have to focus on your front sight so that the target is a little bit blurry and your rear sight is a little bit blurry. And basically, you have to get comfortable at shooting at blurry targets, right? Because you have to be focusing on your front sight. So the great thing about optics is single point of aim. I just look at the target. You know, the target and the dot are on the same plane. They're out there at the same distance. So it's really easy for me to focus on. And uh, in the realistic self-defense type of situation, especially, it's, it's really hard to bring your focus back from the thing that's scaring you to your front sight, okay? So that's why I like optics because the natural thing for you to do is to look at the thing that's scaring you, right? And then expect that your dot will be on it or your aiming system will be on it. Um, so with the, with the optics are great like that. So, but here's the thing when I'm shooting, right, regardless of whether you're using, whether you're focusing on your, on your dot or on your front sight, when I press the trigger, right, I pay attention to where that dot moves. Okay. Where that, you know, let me, uh, let me get behind the camera and what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry fire this, right? Let me see if I can get you guys on the target over there. Let me see if I can bring this into focus a little bit. All right, so there's a rim down there, right? You see that rim over there? All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press the trigger. We're drawing and firing it now. I'm doing this one-handed. All right, so when you press that trigger, right, you want that dot to stay on your target. All right, that time it moved off target, right? So you should be able to call your shots. Let's see if I can move you guys a little bit closer over here because I, I think I got a better focus here. Let's see if that's a better focus on this one. So I'm gonna get my target, my dot on the target. OK, 
okay? So when you press that dot, you don't want that dot to move off the target. So you're not, you don't need to look at the target to know if you, if, it, if, if you hit it or not. You should be able to tell before the bullet even gets there based on if your dot moves off the target. Let's try this one. Okay. I'm, I'm looking at it behind the camera. I'm stretching in front of the camera, so it's a little hard for me to press it the way I normally press it, but... Okay, so, th so that's what you're going to focus on. You're going to focus on that dot. When you press it, let me get the camera back up again. You want to, when you press it, you want to make sure that your dot doesn't come off the target. Uh, and you should know if you're going to hit it or miss it before you, before you hit a ding or before you see the holes on the paper based on when you press the trigger, if that dot moves. So the dot or your front sight is going to give you the information that you need uh, so that you can adjust. So if you're pressing the trigger, right? Let me get behind the camera again. If I am pressing the trigger, right? And I am seeing that I am like right now it's in my left hand. If I'm doing that, every time I press the trigger, the, tr the, the dot's doing that. Okay, I know that I'm applying, I, if, if I see it doing that, I know that I'm pulling the trigger to the left too much, okay? So you wanna, you know, first dry fire, you know, get to the point when you press your trigger, the dot does not come off the target when you press it, right? And then when you do live fire, okay, ignore the bang, ignore the dings, right? Just look at your dot and the dot is gonna tell you if you're gonna hit it before the bolt even gets there. Um, and it's also gonna tell you what you need to correct. So if you see your dot moving down, you know that you know, you're, 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 uh, you're rolling the gun down, you're, you're pressing too hard. If you see it moving to the left, you know you're pulling to the left. If you see it going to the right, you're, you're pushing to the right. So, so use that dot to give you the information that you need so that you can correct yourself. Now, uh, let me turn the camera a little bit more this way, right? And I wanna go through a couple more things. Um, Let's talk about stance. Like, what stance do I take? Well, the stance that I normally take is basically, like, if I'm starting off with my feet side by side, I just drop my right, if I'm shooting right-handed, okay, or two-handed, right, I'll just drop my right foot back, okay? Now, if I'm shooting one-handed, then I'll lead with my right foot so I can push into the gun, all right? If I'm shooting left-handed, left hand only, I'll push into the gun a little bit, right? Now, if I'm shooting left-handed with two hands, then I'll bring my left foot back, right? And then I'm pushing into the gun. So, uh, basically the, uh, you know, because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get as much weight forward into the gun. So with two hands, basically the, the power is coming up through my legs and, you know, pushing through like that. However, if I don't have the benefit of the other hand, I'm pushing forward like that, right? So the, so the power is actually coming through my body out like that. Um, now the other thing I want to mention as far as stance, uh, because there's different stances, that's not the only stance that I will use. I mean, there's also, let's say, like your horse stance or your crouching stance, we're like this. And, and that is a stance I will sometimes use, you know, especially if I'm trying to get a little bit lower. Uh, but I try not to use it if I don't need it, right? The reason is because if you're bending your knees, right, you're now using your muscles and your muscles are going to get tired out. So, I'm gonna get a lot more mileage if I lock my legs out. So now that my bones are, are supporting my weight instead of my muscles. And then from there, I just drop my right foot back a little bit. So that allows me to push forward. Or if I'm shooting one-handed, I'll, I'll, I'll lead with that, with that leg and push forward like that. Now, the other thing I wanna say is, as far as this, uh, the stance that I typically use, right? Um, I kinda of carry it over. Let me turn the camera a little bit more this way. I, ca I kind of carry it over from my fighting, right? Because uh, one of the things to know is that most self-defense encounters don't go straight to gun, right? Uh, there's a there's probably a, a at least a 33% chance uh, that that there's going to be some escalation involved. That the way it's going to work is that it's going to start off with yelling and screaming. Maybe you'll go to hands. Maybe you go from hands to weapon. Uh, maybe that the, the weapon gets knocked out of play and you have to go back to hands. So I want to use a technique, right, where I can go from fighting, right? I can use my, my boxing because my background, you know, I got some boxing in my background. I used to teach boxing, right? So I want to go from my, from my fighting stance to my, to my grip, 
right? My feet didn't change, right? So fighting is fighting. Doesn't matter whether I'm using my fist or whether I'm using my gun. And then if the gun gets knocked out of my battery, at a battery, right? If I can't use the gun, I can go back to hand. So I want to use a technique where I can go back and forth from 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 hands to gun, uh, you know, back to hands. Okay. Um, now, if like I said, my background is is boxing, right? I've done some some training in boxing. I've also done lots of short fighting. Um, so so that's the the fighting that I'm bringing into this. If your if your background is in some different martial art, right? Because like I know that the Muay Thai guys they take a different stance, right? They they they, they take more of a side by side stance, right? They're up here like this. Right. If that's what your background is, it makes sense for you to sh to, to to shoot from that position, right? If, if if this is how you fight with your feet side by side because you got a Muay Thai background, then that's the position where you probably want to be drawing your gun from, because this way you can transition back and forth uh, from from uh, you know from gun fighting to fist fighting. You know, if you're a Muay Thai guy, you're gonna be using your legs a lot. You know, so you, you want to be able to bring all of your tools into the fight, okay? If um, if you don't have a, a martial arts background, um, uh, you know, you've probably, I don't know, maybe you played baseball or something when you were younger or tennis. Uh, usually with the tennis players and the baseball players, uh, they're, because they're swinging from here like that. So the stance that, that that most resembles is the stance where if you're right-handed, the right foot is back, okay, right? And then you're coming out like that, okay? And then if you're gonna swing a bat, right? You're using the hips, right, to, to swing the same way. So so again, that's if that's the background you have, that's gonna be what I think is the most comfortable for you. Uh, and then let's say if a club or some other weapon is introduced at some point to the fight, you know, you can transition back and forth, you know, between those two things, between gun and other weapon or fists or whatever, okay? So, um, so yeah, I, I just wanted to share those ideas with you guys. Um, you know, I'm a big believer in like there's 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 not just one way to do things, right? There's, there's there's you know there can be multiple ways of doing things, and I've seen other people use uh, different techniques and be very very good at it. Um, the techniques that I'm showing you guys, uh, in addition to myself using them, I have I have trained because I'm, I'm a full time gun instructor. Um, I have literally like trained like thousands of women to shoot guns the way you guys see me shoot the guns here. Um, and they they're able to learn it and shoot it very well so it's a, these techniques are techniques that I've seen lots of different people at different levels different ages different sizes uh, be able to use these techniques okay so uh, if you're coming into this as as a like a beginner uh, you know it, there's a good chance that it will work for you because I have seen it work for so many other people again who are coming into this never having shot a gun before. So thanks for watching. Drop some comments below. Let me know what you think. I'll talk to you all soon.